This web app costs users 100 US dollars a month. It uses Stripe to manage payments and subscriptions and is written entirely in Rust. Let's walk through how to build it step-by-step. Step. I will also show you how to get a ton of monthly recurring revenue in a test environment without real money. When you first load the page, you see the subscribe button with a rock underneath it. And this is the free version of the product. You get a rock emoji, but say you get sick of the rock emoji and you want something a little more glamorous, just click the subscribe button and you are taken to the Stripe checkout flow. You are given the price. All you have to do is enter your credit card number. Uh, I'm gonna enter my credit card number. Please don't steal it. I can trust you guys, right? Click subscribe and we are taken back to the page and we can see the rock has turned into a gem, which is the paid version of the product. All right, let's look at how to build this from the ground up. By the way, you might be surprised to know that this was built without the help of a UX designer. We'll create our project using the Leptos full stack starter template. We'll do cargo leptos new dash dash git and then the address of the git repo. Then we'll add the async Stripe crate, which is what we'll use to interact with Stripe. We have to add it as optional with the Runtime Tokyo Hyper feature. We can serve the starter app locally using Cargo Leptos Watch, which also gives us hot reloading. Because we don't wanna ship the async Stripe crate to the front end, we'll add it to the list of dependencies enabled by the SSR feature. That way, it'll only be included if the SSR feature is enabled, which will only be the case on the back end. In our app.rs file, we'll create three functions that will run on our back end. The first is get product, which will return a result with a tuple in it. The first element of the tuple will be a Boolean indicating whether the user is a paid subscriber. And the second element will be the product the user is entitled to. In our case, that's an emoji. These functions are gonna be annotated with the server macro, which tells Leptos that they are to be run on the back end. But the really cool thing is that they'll be directly callable from the front end code too. Before we finish writing the function body, we'll just return okay and false and a rock just to appease the LSP. Before we go any further, let's talk about the Stripe data model as it pertains to what we're building. In Stripe, there are products and customers. A product has one or more prices. A price includes a cost and a billing interval. For example, it could be a one-time purchase or it could be a monthly recurring cost. When a customer subscribes to a product, there is a subscription object created which links the customer to a price. I'm skimming over some details here, but that's the high-level overview. You can actually create products and customers programmatically with Stripe's APIs and in most cases, you will probably be creating customers programmatically, but you can also create customers and products manually using Stripe's web interface. And in real world situations, you'll probably be creating products manually. When we create a product, we can also specify a price and payment interval. In our case, that's going to be 100 US dollars on a monthly cadence. For this project, we're just going to manually create a product and customer in the Stripe UI. We'll copy the customer ID and hard code it into our web app. I'm just gonna copy and paste in the long use statement for all the Stripe identifiers that we're going to use. Note the CFG macro with feature equals SSR. That makes it so the following line will only be included if the SSR feature is enabled. We'll set up a globally accessible Stripe client that can be used in any of our server functions. We'll use the Rust standard library's lazy lock to do just that. A quick way to see if a customer is subscribed to a product is to call the Stripe subscriptions API to list all the subscriptions associated with that customer. There's a list subscription struct with the fields necessary for that API. We'll fill in the customer field with that hard-coded customer ID. In the real world, you'd probably have the user's Stripe customer ID stored in your database. Then we'll assume if they have any subscriptions that they're entitled to have a diamond emoji. Otherwise they get a rock emoji. And that is our get product server function. There are a number of refinements that can be made here. First of all, we could validate that the customer's subscription corresponds to the specific product that we created, but in this case, we only have that one product, so I've left out that check. Another thing is that Stripe provides a means of sending events to your service whenever a customer makes a purchase or a cancellation. And in the real world, you'd most likely have an API receiving those events and recording the state of the customer's subscriptions in your database. Then you don't have to make requests to Stripe every time you need to get subscription status. But this will be fine for our example project. The next server function we'll make is checkout. This is what we'll call when the user doesn't yet have a paid subscription and they click on the subscribe button. It should redirect them to what's called a checkout session, which is a page hosted by Stripe that allows them to pay. When they're done, they should be redirected back to our web application so they can see their new diamond emoji. The nice thing about this is that Stripe handles the entire checkout process and acts as a custodian for all the credit card numbers. From our point of view, we can just ask Stripe who has an active subscription or not. We're going to use the checkout session API, so we'll create a parameter struct and fill in some of the fields. We specify a redirect URL for the case where the user decides to cancel the checkout process 
and also for the case where they successfully complete checkout. In both cases, for now, that's just going to be localhost. We specify the customer ID of our one customer, subscription for checkout session mode, and a vector of checkout session line items. It's a vector because the customer can potentially be buying multiple things at once, but in our case, there's just one item in the vector. Remember the product we created in the Stripe web UI? There's an ID associated with the price that will create a const string slice for just like we did for the customer ID. And then in the checkout session line item, we refer to that price ID. We'll call the checkout session API, which will actually respond with the URL that we should redirect the user to. Leptos actually allows server functions to redirect the user's browser to another URL. And to do that, we use the leptos axum redirect function. So we can just pass in the URL that we got from the checkout session that we created. In the success case, we return a unit type because we've already configured a redirect to be in the response. And of course, if for whatever reason, creating the checkout session failed, we just return an error. That is the checkout server function. Again, that's what the front end is going to invoke when the user clicks the subscribe button. There is one more server function we need to implement, which is unsubscribe. At this point, we're going to move to the front end side of things. In the same app.rs file, we have this homepage function annotated with a component macro. The component function will eventually return a view, which uses an HTML-like syntax to describe the contents of the page. There's a leptos construct called action that can be used to represent an action taken by the user. We'll create a subscribe action, which will wrap a closure that invokes the checkout server function. Later, we'll have another action for unsubscribing. And since we're on the topic of subscriptions, this subscription button is completely free. There's another Leptos construct called resource that can be used to retrieve data that will be surfaced to the user on the page. It takes two closures. And without going into too much detail, the first one describes conditions that should cause the resource to be reloaded. The second defines how to retrieve the data. In our case, we just call our get product server function. Remember the return value of get product is a tuple where the first element is a Boolean indicating subscription status, and the second is a string containing the product the user is entitled to. So we'll make a closure for extracting the product string that we can then interpolate into the view macro. Calling product.get in the closure ensures that the closure will be run whenever the value of the product resource changes. The value inside the resource is an option which wraps the return value of our server function, which is a result, so we'll create match arms accordingly. We can destructure the tuple to extract the product string like this. Now that we have the closure assigned to product display, we can interpolate it into the view macro. In the view macro, we'll create a button element and assign it an event handler for on click. The handler will call .dispatch on our subscribe action, which will result in an HTTP call being made to our subscribe server function. And then there's product display. We'll put it inside a suspense component, which Leptos gives us to hide content until the resources inside are loaded. So at this point, everything should be working except unsubscribe. Okay, the page loads, but it's way too bright for me. Really quick, we'll just add some basic Tailwind CSS classes to make things look a little better. I won't go into too much detail on how to do this, Refer to the Leptos manual if you want the lowdown. When we load the page, we see the rock, which is what we expect. We can click on the subscribe button and we get redirected to the Stripe checkout flow. Our products and customers are in Stripe test mode, so we can use test credit card numbers to go through the flow. One of the test credit card numbers is 42 repeating over and over. We set an expiration date anytime in the future and use any three digit number for the security code. Enter a name, click pay, and we get redirected back to our app. There we go, we're back in our app and we can see the diamond that only pays subscribers get. Okay, we're almost done. Let's go implement the unsubscribe server function. It's going to look a lot like the other two. First, we actually need to get the subscriptions associated with the user because we need the ID of their subscription to cancel it. We create a parameter struct, fill in the customer ID field, and then make a request to the subscription API. We get the first element of the list of subscriptions that comes back. If one exists, we extract the ID field. If there wasn't at least one subscription, the user shouldn't have even been able to invoke the server function, so something is wrong and we return an error. Then we create the cancel subscription parameter struct. I'll spare you the details of the fields. Check out the Stripe documentation for more info. Then we call the subscription cancel API, passing in the subscription ID that we found. Unsubscribe won't actually return anything, just an okay with the unit type if everything went as planned. Okay, that's it for server functions. Let's circle back to the front end component. We need to get this button text to say unsubscribe if the user is already subscribed. And instead of redirecting the user to the checkout flow, we need it to call our unsubscribe server function. First, we'll create an unsubscribe action, which wraps a call to the unsubscribe server function. Then somewhat similar to the way we made a closure for product display, we'll create a closure for our button. It'll also match on product.get, 
So it'll automatically re-render anytime the product resource changes. Instead of destructuring the product string, we're going to destructure the first element of the product tuple, which indicates whether the user is a paid subscriber. If it's false, we return a view containing the same exact button that we had before. If it's true, we return a button with the text unsubscribe, which invokes our unsubscribe action. If it's something unexpected, we just return an empty view. Notice the type errors here. The type generated by the view macro is different depending on what it contains, which makes match statements like this interesting because the Rust compiler expects all match arms to yield the same type. Luckily, we can just call into any on each of the views to get them to all be the same type, which appeases the type checker. Then in the view macro, we'll delete our previous button and interpolate the new button into another suspense element, since we don't want to show it until the product resource is loaded, kind of like product display. Okay, now we can test unsubscribe. Remember, we subscribed prior to implementing unsubscribe, so we can see the gem. Our button now says unsubscribe and we can click it. There is a bit of delay between calling unsubscribe and the point where Stripe API requests reflect that cancellation, so I didn't have the page refresh automatically. But now that it's been a few seconds, we can refresh the page and there we go, back to the free version. And there you go, that is how to build a full stack Rust web application with Stripe integration. If you're not an expert in Rust, there might have been some pieces of syntax you saw in this video that you didn't fully understand. If that's the case, you might be interested in Ultimate Rust Crash Course, which is available on Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. Skillshare has thousands of courses across a wide variety of topics like productivity, I'm a fan of Ali Abdel by the way, art, photography, and UX design. UX design is what I'm personally going to be working on because it's become pretty clear to me that I have room for improvement there. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across many different topics. It can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions, or side hustles to the next level. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. If you like this video, definitely check out this other video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.